just a little tall here. <laughs> so I want to give it up for the nurses. Thank you so much for all the job that you've done. So my name, my name is Sofia, and I am the San Antonio Healthcare Organizer for the Tech Organizing Project, or TOP as we call it. We are a community-based grassroots organization that works to lift up communities of colors, particularly low-income communities. Um, my story, like I'm not a union member, I'm not a nurse, I'm a, just a regular person living a regular life until um, 20, uh, 2008, my, uh, my dad got diagnosed with emphysema. He called me about it. He was living in Mexico. I've, um, I kept on asking him to move in with me and he kept on saying no. Um, I, little did I know that in 2012, Mexico passed a universal healthcare system in which allowed my dad to get medication and treatment that otherwise would have been impossible for him had he lived here. Um, in 2014, my dad passed away and I went to his funeral. I stayed with my brother. My brother had a little dog who scratched me in the neck and I didn't think anything of it. I came back to the United States. Six months later, I started having fevers. A bump started growing out of my neck. I went to my doctor, which he was a low income doctor. I did not have insurance young, healthy, what did I need to spend the extra money, right? So the doctor said that I might have lymphoma and I had to go to the hospital. I went to the hospital. They told me I had a fever, here's ibuprofen, go back home. You don't have insurance, right? So I went to the indigent healthcare system and because I was making $26,000 a year, lots of money, right? <laughs> They told me I was not qualified for the indigent healthcare system, but I could get temporary treatment as long as I pay 80% of my cost. Without an option, I had to say yes. I ended up in the hospital for two weeks. Uh, turned out I had a staph infection, multi-drug resistant, and I was released with a $15,000 debt, right? Um, at the time, um, I realized that I was not the only one. I went back to work. I started talking to my peers, asking them how they do when they get sick. What do they do when they get sick? What do you do with your insurance? I knew the insurance of my job, the most expensive was $200 a month with a $3,500 deductible. That is still a lot of money. The cheapest one was actually $75 a month. Cheap. Six thousand dollar deductible at a job where they pay you eleven dollars an hour you cannot afford that so they did have a plan right they, they, ha they had an option you can save ten dollars out of your paycheck on this healthcare savings plan that you can later access if you get sick for someone who lives at eleven dollars an hour we cannot afford to put ten dollars into our savings systems we cannot afford to go see a doctor. So many of them went without, many of them worked 70 hours a week in order to see a doctor whenever their children got sick. Um, so it was pretty hard for me. I, um, I started getting the treatment, I started to get a little better. Came 2015, I started volunteering for Bernie and because he was the only one. And even though I've been involved in politi uh, political campaigns before, this campaign touched my heart. He was the only one speaking about a better future for us. He was talking about something I didn't know we were possible, which was Medicare for all, right? So I started um, going to Democratic clubs and listening to them, and I decided to become a, pre a precinct chair. So armed with the information of the voters in my neighborhood, I started knocking on doors and asked them the, que the same questions. What do you do when you get sick? The stories that I've heard were heartbreaking. A uh, senior who was on Medicare, who had just heart surgery, wasn't able to afford his medication. He had to rely on his grown son to give him $400 a month to pay for his heart medication. And 
that was the beginning of it. I, uh, at, at 2016, while everybody was grieving, I got angry. And I posted, we should do a march for Medicare for all. That was it. That, that was the beginning. People in San Antonio started to inbox me, saying they wanted to help. Several candidates for Congress, several candidates for city council started inboxing me too. I thought that I was way over my head. No one really knew me except for my job, my neighborhood, and the Democratic Club that I was attending to. So what to do? I started going to organizations around my city and began recruiting support. The Esperanza Peace and Justice Center, National U Nurses United, Southwest Workers Union, Planned Parenthood Texas Votes, Domestica Unidas, Indivisible, San Antonio DSA, Our Revolution, we went to the labor unions, uh, AFL-CIO, AFT, ATU, Unite Here, and of course, Healthcare Now. And we started um, the process of the march, then we started turning into our community, armed with a lot of folks, from these organizations, we began knocking on doors and we began spreading the message of Medicare for All. Whenever we had the first march, which Judy was right there, was part of it, uh, we, she sits on the board of healthcare now. Big round of applause to Judy, please. So we started um, organizing the march so around the time Beto O'Rourke was running for Senate. So we started an email in Beto O'Rourke to uh, four months before the marriage. They kept on giving us the runaround. I didn't relent. I didn't stop. I kept on asking. Then um, three weeks before the marriage, we find out he had a town hall the same day at the same time. And we put him on blast. Everyone started emailing him and unsubscribing from his campaign, asking them to support the legislation. Uh, the day before the march, actually, I received an email from Beto saying that he's, he was gonna show up to the march, but he was not gonna speak. He did not know me. <laughs> the moment he showed up, I asked him to speak about the benefits for Medicare for All. The next day, In a group of 400 people, there were plenty of pictures of Beto speaking at a Medicare for All rally, right? The next day, he sent that picture with a fundraising email, and he got the most donations that he received at that point of his campaign. He then started going to Bill Maher, saying that he supported Medicare for All, until the primary when he won and backed out of the legislation. We cannot trust Beto. We cannot trust Beto. So um, we have not stopped since then. This year, thanks to the support and resources from Texas Organizing Project and other partner organizations, we got Lloyd Doggett to sign to HR 1384. <laughs> no, no small feat as he sits on the Ways and Means Committee, and we have much work to do. September, we did a soft launch of our Sick of It Texas campaign. That is sickofittx.com with amazing organizations such as Center for Public Policy Priority and the Children's Defense Funds, whose purpose is to get us third legislators to address the horrid healthcare system we have in Texas, which, was, which is the number one state with the worst healthcare outcomes. Um, our job, our organizers, is to educate, inform, and activate our community through massive outreach, popular education, and bring them to the movement. And this is the place to learn it all. Thank you all.